Uh, welcome to Malentad YouTube channel. Today I will be showing you how you can do a concept notebook and also how to do a reflective journal. Uh, this will especially be very useful for all the nursing students but the guideline I will be following is uh, Nightingale College because I go to, to that school so for most of the learners I'm sure you will find this very helpful and also um, some of you guys asked me to do videos on a HESI exams i'm working on that i'm gathering information um and get you guys uh like in order to give you guys uh right information and how i pass my i did three HESIs, HESIs so i will also tell you guys how i pass my HESIs and what um study guide that i used and but for today let's get into concept notebook and reflective journal i hope you'll find this video um useful okay let's get to it okay this is how the concept notebook template looks like um so first thing i will open my um notebook uh, template my concept notebook template and then also i use the our textbook Gideon's textbook uh, that's where i get uh, most of my information uh, I really find it very helpful and also nurse lab gives you great information great assessment great intervention uh, it's actually a very good website to use so first thing we need to do is just like this is where we put the learners the learner name and the course what course you are and this is the faculty facilitate facilitator if it is DFC, you put DFC. If it is VCBC, you put your VCBC. So this is where you write the concept. Which concept are you doing? Are you doing mobility, acid base, gas exchange, infection, whatever your concept you're working on. And here the activity is where you write, um, if it is a DFC patient, you write the DFC patient, but initials only, so we don't uh, give away patient's information and the date of and time of, and when, like, you did it. And here, uh, the clinical or virtual or living background. So here is where you tell um, a little about your patients. How is your patient, the name, age, and how uh, how are they admitted to the hospital and what is the reason for admission as well this is where you write um, so you know when your professor reads says so they have a, an idea of uh, a patient that you're working on so here is where you uh, do your related concept so here you uh, name any concepts that affect uh, the concept for the week let's say if you're doing mobility in this example this can affect the concept of uh, tissue integrity and I have opened one actually that I can show you guys um, so this is the unrelated concept for mobility so if our concept is mobility this are the all the unrelated or related concept that we can use pain, nutrition, gas exchange, perfusion, and all this. And we go, we write down here the, the related concepts and how is that concept is um, related to the patient that you're working on. Um, let's say if the tissue integrity can be affected by the mobility, uh, when there is decreased mobility, right? It causes prolonged pressure over the uh, bony promise, prom for bony areas, I don't know how to say that word. <laughs> so that that can cause a breakdown of the skin, right? So you write about that concept that needs to be uh, that are related, and then make sure you relate it with the patient. How is this concept related to the patient? That's the most uh, important thing to focus on as well. So it depends on the which class you or you are at uh, for example you need to write i believe for 205 and 225 uh, you write two related concepts and then as you go up uh, it's gonna get more and then here it's asking about related exemplars so for related exemplars this is the list where you don't want to explain anything here you do not have to explain anything you're just like 
put a bullet points uh like um there are like uh let me show you usually uh, so it's asking you what are the exemplars okay if you're using mobility how is uh, what is the related example for mobility that can uh affect so it's like more medical diagnosis that you need to list down with the concept that you're working on let's say we're, wor we're working on the concept mobility this time so we write down exemplars that is related to mobility and for that i always go to my guidance book because at least a bunch of them so i don't have to look anywhere and they're all related here clinical exemplars and after that it's asking um it's asking you about uh, related assessments right here we you see it so this section requires you to explain the many ways a nurse can assess a patient mobility how can we assess mobility or as i say whatever concept we're doing for the week i'm giving you just an example of mobility so what are the assessments that needs to be done in order to uh, assess the, the patient's mobility uh, so you can just kind of ask like oh uh, say like what kind of assessment how to do it and why n a nurse would do this assessment in relation to your concept so because everything has to relate it to your concept so that's the whole concept of the concept notebook and then the information can be, as I said, found on the concept of nursing uh, practice and our guidance. We can find the assessments in there. And uh, when you do the assessment, let, let's say if you need to do a vital sign assessment, so you have to write the rational bit uh, behind that. Why do we need uh, to assess vital sign for the patient that has um, impaired mobility? Or why do we have to, let's say if you write a skin assessment so how is that skin assessment related to the patient that is immobile right so always make sure you write down um, the rational behind that when you do the related assessment and then here related lab and diagnostic test this is where uh, you name a s or a specific lab or a diagnostic test that could be used to further assess the patient having um, mobility uh teach uh, like mobility issue or whatever the concept we're doing for the week so it's important that we know whatever lab or lab or diagnostic test um we choose that we know what is being measured and what does it have to do with the concept of the week and that way will help us um like we have all this lab report and then we'll have like what for what things to do what to do uh further and also we need to explain um and give rationale behind that the lab test that we're doing let's say if we're doing for mobility a uh, bone density how is bone density related to the concept or how is that lab value is going to give us anything about the patient so bone density it measures um the density of the the bone so it will tell us like the strings or we can have any other uh, lab so the point is that every time we state that we need to do this lab so we need to write down what is the rational and um, and connected to the concept uh, that we're doing on and here we have related nursing and in uh, intervention so this kind of fall back to the assessment so if you do the skin assessment so what are you going to do for the intervention like it can be as simple as okay, okay turn patient every two hours for this uh that way the skin doesn't uh get breakdown um encourage fluid what are you doing to in order to make the patient better with that concept that we're using we have uh, we're doing mobility and we have a patient that is immobile right so what are we doing uh it can be as small as like taking the patient to small walk or en encourage the patient to ambulate uh with assistance like that way uh we don't want any uh dvp right deep 
deep uh, thrombosis like deep vein thrombosis due to a lack of um, moving or a lack of activity so this also this information it can be found in our guidance book the guidance book has everything so all you gotta do is you can you can take notes from here and then uh, relate it to your patient that you have so this the book really helped me i was actually having a hard time to do this concept notebooks for the first semester but uh, after i kind of like how know how to navigate and then like see how to take some information from the guidance book really helped me a lot so that's why you do uh on nursing intervention is like you what well, what are you doing to have the patient like for a great outcome uh for the patient and also i use for intervention i use nursing um the nurse lab nurse labs has so many intervention of any um, nursing diagnosis you can look for so i take some information from there and of course make sure you put your uh don't forget your citation um and then now we come down to related medications so here the related medication we we are not just coming up with the medication this section requires to name a medication that a patient let's say with mobility uh issue that a patient that might take to prevent an issue like developing with the concept of this which is mobility so you name the medication and what does the that medication do to do to the patient right Con uh, like so you connect it with the concept that you're doing so let's say oh patient is taking this medication oh why is if the patient is taking a muscle relax um a muscle relaxant uh, medication why is the patient taking that so by taking this mess like muscle relaxation medication the patient will improve this test you have to read the rationale behind that too so that would help uh, the patient and also uh, that way the you they um, the facilitators like whoever is grading your concept notebook knows okay this is related medication as it says related medication so how it is related how is that medication is related to the concept you're doing to, to the patient so make sure just to write a, a rational uh, behind that and then here it's it's talking about potential complication so what what so it's potential now the patient have this complication and if this thing got worse what would happen so it's asking what can be a potential complication so it's like uh you name a condition a disease or illness that fall under that concept that you're doing so this still has to be related to your concept it has to connect with your uh, concept let's say if you're doing mobility if a patient fractured a bone in their foot and refused to seek treatment this will lead to decreased mobility which could um, lead to decreased uh, strength and possible uh, malformation of the foot like due to the fractured bone they have so you make sure uh, to explain that and give rational to it so when you give your rational it will go and connect uh with the concept that you're doing and with your concept of the patient uh, care and here we have collaborative care so for collaborative care you are required to name another medical person another medical staff uh, department that could help uh, to the patient get better if we're doing mobility uh what other stuff can you um collab with so it can be pt ot and also uh, a social worker uh because you want the social worker like you want to you want to the patient to be able to get up and walk does he have any home care aid so the social worker can organize that and the pt can uh, help the patient walk and get the strength to get the muscle the strength that they've been missing and that's the reason that like all that collaboration is to make the concept like to make the patient and your main concept uh, which is mobility to 
make your patient feel better so all this collab will comes down uh, a better goal or a better outcome for the patient so all those people pt ot um nutrition dietitian um can come and call up to a better outcome and then always reference your um where you get your information that's how uh, you do a concept notebook it's pretty much um it's pretty much it and then you make sure you can get you don't only need to use your information uh, from guidance as i said i mentioned you can use from a nurse lab you can get it uh, any other uh, information just make sure you cite your work that's uh, very important for a reflective journal it's pretty much uh, straightforward so they will give you like four questions and you will answer those four questions based off your um, scenario, the given scenario. So the questions, there are uh, four questions most, most of the time. Uh, what concept do you think are important in this scenario and why? So the same thing, every time I do this, I go back to um, my guidance for this as specific assignment. I did family dynamics. So I go to guidance, I look for family di uh, dynamics and get a concept from that and how I relate or connected to my patient and uh, the second question is what abnormal signs and symptoms did you recognize and how did you prioritize your care of this patient of uh, the same thing if you see any sign um, and symptom you talk about it of uh, the abnormal sign and then well how would you prioritize um, your care for this patient uh, and then of course always uh, we prioritize uh, we go by abc airway breathing and circulation so go off that uh, for most of the time. It's very helpful. Uh, how would you change your action or intervention if you had a second chance to care? So for this question, you think of the whole situation, the whole concept of the uh, the actual assignment or concept you were doing. And then if you would be able to care for this patient like second chance, so you can have change of a little uh, of the things that has been done before that way you get a better outcome and then last question is how would you apply what you have learned from this scenario to future patients of course we learn um, to gain more knowledge and to go out and uh, have a very uh, good practice in nursing so you will be talking about okay how is this um, scenario help you to go and apply it in practice so that's pretty much it. It's the concept notebook that has um, a little bit uh, of a uh, challenging, but the reflective journal is, this is how we do it. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, okay, thank you for watching. I hope you guys uh, find this very helpful. And also, as always, if you have any questions, ask away and I will be so happy to help. Okay, bye. Stay safe.